when we talk about olfaction, we're actually very, very deep in the brain in a sense. We're in a part of the brain that we call the limbic system. And it's interesting because it's connected, basically, olfaction, to the part of the brain that processes emotions. And that's our ne next segment. Emotions are very complex in humans, obviously, in part because we have a tendency to add some cognitive factors in all of this, right? We think about things, we worry about things. And humans, because we have so big frontal lobes and prefrontal lobes, we can actually worry about things that have not happened yet. That's quite remarkable. What I'm saying here is that there's a connection, in a sense, between the cognitive things and the affective or emotional things. And for that reason, we'll discuss a little bit how to situate the new affective neuroscience and the new affective psychology and ethology, how it fits with the rest of what we know uh, about animal behavior and canine behavior in particular. In a sense, we'll focus on relatively negative stuff, though, unfortunately. One is aggression, um, which is connected with the other theme that we'll approach, which is this kind of like very wide uh, set of concepts of very high arousal that we define sometimes as stress or anxiety uh, or fear. And we'll discuss the distinction between these things and how they actually work from a neuroscience perspective, but also from a behavioral perspective. I'm not going to necessarily give you solutions on how to address aggression or how to address anxiety and stress, but I will certainly give you a really good way of thinking about how it actually works and how these things interact with, thought, with, with thoughts, but also with the context. And we will talk a little bit about how to get some of these things to get resolved. We may even have the time to talk a little bit about play, which is a very interesting area of ethology and neuroscience these days. Looking forward to it.